What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're gonna to be hopping in my Rivian R1T. We're headed from Charlotte, North Carolina, and we're headed to Raleigh, North Carolina to go look at a really cheap Model 3. And for those of you wondering how cheap of a Model 3, we're going to look at a 2018 Model 3 long range rear wheel drive, which they don't sell anymore. They only sold for about two years or so. It was one of the first specs that they had, discontinued it mid 2019 ish. Um, but it's one of the longest range, most efficient vehicles because it has the long bat or the long range battery, 74 kilowatt hour. Um, but it's rear wheel drive, so it's really efficient uh, and also does full 250 kilowatt uh, supercharging. So this particular example has 80,000 miles on it. Uh, and it's listed for 29 and change, and it's actually been for sale since August, uh, and it's now mid-January 2023, and it's dropped from about $44,000 all the way down to 29 and change now, so pretty significant drop. This dealer's very likely taking a pretty big uh, loss on this vehicle, uh, and what makes this vehicle a pretty good deal compared to some of the others, because 29 is about the going rate, uh, is that this one in particular actually has the full self-driving option uh, enabled on it. So that's worth, Tesla says $15,000, but on the used market, it's worth generally around three to 5K. Um, and that's about what I'm willing to spend extra for it because I do think it will help the resale long-term very slightly. Um, and I just want the novelty factor more than anything else. But uh, this dealer also has a few others. They actually have a Model 3 Performance uh, for about 32 and change, but that one only has autopilot safety features. So it doesn't actually have base autopilot even. So that one's kind of out of the running just based on the price. But um, the long range rear wheel drive that we're talking about, it's actually silver. So not midnight silver, but actual silver metallic. And I'm kind of a sucker for silver, silver Model 3. I think they just look awesome. That's by far the best color in a Model 3. And it's also pretty rare. So I like unique cars versus having the same Model 3 as everyone else. But like I said, we're headed to Raleigh. It's about 150 miles. Let me show you the route. So we're here in Charlotte. We're at 78% charge. I didn't bother charging last night. Um, and it's estimated that we'll arrive with 57 miles. I'll end up swapping it into uh, conserve mode here once we get on the interstate. Because I don't really like driving in conserve mode uh, just around town. I'm going to look at Google Maps. I don't really love this route. It might be the shortest, uh, but most of this route is unmapped for Driver Plus, and I really would prefer to not have to drive the entire way. So let me look in Google Maps, see if it there's other options. Maybe that. Nope. Sometimes Rivian Nav will give you other options, but let's see what that says. So I looked in Google Maps. It actually wants us to go through uh, kind of uh, Archdale... When, not Winston-Salem, but like High Point, the big loop here, I think that's I-40, something like that. Uh, it does add a little bit of miles. It's about 174 miles instead of about 150, but that's fine. We have a ton of charging options if we really need it. So we're going to go that way. should be faster. Google Maps in about two hours, 37 minutes. Uh, I told the dealership I'd be there around between one and two. Let's reset our trip here. It's kind of funny because I was actually in Winston-Salem yesterday, so if I had planned a little bit better, I could have just done this yesterday, but well, yeah, whatever. I got a little late for that yesterday. Let's get on the road. And if you're a regular viewer, you'll wonder where the heck is the Starbucks or why are we not going to Starbucks? Well, I've actually started drinking this thing called uh, Yerba Mate, which seems to make me a little bit more alert without as much of the sugar and caffeine side effects. So um, no Starbucks today. We might stop at a Sheets or something, though, for lunch because I haven't eaten anything today. So we'll get on the road and make decent time.
Well, we've arrived to Ridgewood Shopping Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're at an EVGO site. Uh, specifically went to this one because EVGO is really cheap to use with a fast charging vehicle uh, and it actually happened to be the most convenient. So let's get plugged in. Just like that. Activate here with my EVGO card. That's just the easiest here when filming. And fun fact on these units, you actually use the credit card reader as also the RFID reader. So we're connecting now. And then here we have the two 100 kilowatt units. No uh, Tesla unit on these, or uh, like integrated adapter. We've got the equipment over there, uh, actually behind a screening fence. Rivian looking good as always. Just heard some contactors click. Still connecting to vehicle. Good noise is happening. We've got a green light too. Connection successful, all right. Give me the nerdy data. Session details, there we go. It's a bit bright today. It's about 50 degrees out. Pack voltage is really low because we're at 6%, but you can see it's rising pretty quickly. And we should get 180, 190, somewhere in there, kilowatt. Because uh, we should get the full 500 amps or 497 is usually what it ends up settling into. Just like that, getting the juice. 191 kilowatt, Let's see what the truck says. Just like that, 192 kilowatt, works perfectly. Love to see it. Then here's our efficiency. Maybe, there we go. So 1.89 miles per kilowatt hour, um, 167 miles driven, so. We'll head to the dealer next. Let's take a look here. Uh, it's also worth noting, I did not precondition the vehicle because I wanted the battery to not be overheated. So it looks like we've got about a five mile, 10 minute drive over to the dealership with the Model 3. So probably gonna find some food. There's a Whole Foods down that way. I'm gonna see if there's anything else. There's also a Burgers Bagels. So on my way back from Whole Foods, uh, getting some lunch, Just wanted to check out the equipment here. So we've got the cabinet, we have a, let's see what size transformer. 500 kVA transformer. And we actually don't have disconnects here. What a miracle. This is such a better installation than what EVGO has been doing lately, so cabinet with a let's see what size we don't actually see a rating on here um only the fault current got our 350 kilowatt cabinet we have our small step down transformer this is a 15 kva unit that thing is quite large for the power and then we have our small 120 to 240 uh distribution and there's our uh, r1t charging with an id4 next to it let's get on the road so here you can see what it looks like when uh, two vehicles are charging. Works decently well. Looks like the ID4 is getting uh, all that it can take. Let's see there. So 87 kilowatt hour in 36 minutes. We'll hit stop charge there and just like that. Cable's a little bit warm, just to be expected. Processing. Probably won't actually give me a cost. It's pretty bad with the if you go prepaid plan as they call it probably just going to get an error here yeah well anyway let's hop in the truck <clears throat> so we're up to uh 67 percent and let's see what the truck says we added the truck says we added 90.6 kilowatt hour can't complain about that head to the dealership we're gonna be probably a couple minutes after two but that's fine not the end of the world not far away at all
Well, here's a Model 3 Performance for 32 and change. You can tell it's been here a while because this is so faded. Steeler has a lot of nice cars though. Got an e-tron here. Take a look at that. So here's the Model 3. You can see it's got paint protection film there, but not there. This fender doesn't have paint protection film, but this does, this does, and this does, which is super weird. Most of the curbs are wheels are curbed. It's got 80,000 miles. Missing a rear emblem. This paint doesn't match 100%. We've got a cracked roof glass, which is not great. But overall, not terrible. Has a matte screen protector. Has a pivot swivel screen, as you can see here. And it actually has a full self-driving. Just like that. So, not great. Well, we've left the dealership, Hannah Imports. Uh, didn't leave with the vehicle. As you can tell, there's not a trailer behind me with the Tesla on it. Uh, they are apparently a one price dealership. Uh, they basically use the pricing algorithms uh, to adjust their pricing, but I don't think their pricing is adjusted quickly enough. Guy showed me some of their uh, like pricing benchmarks of sorts that they're the cheapest in 500 miles, uh, blah, blah, blah. But basically none of that matters in this market, especially on Teslas with how quickly they're dropping. Um, so I basically told them to call me when, it's t when they're ready to sell it for 25 or less. Uh, I had them appraise the Rivian just out of curiosity. They quoted me at about $77,000 and I paid, I think it was 78 plus destination plus tax. So I'm roughly 83 into it. So that's not high enough. It looks like uh, on cars and bids, they're going for about 85 or so plus the buyer's fee. Um, obviously the seller doesn't get the buyer's fee, but just for market pricing. Um, so obviously didn't take that. And the more I looked at that Model 3, the rougher it was. Um, I probably already showed the clip, but basically there were a lot of little things going on with it. Paint protection film was missing on the passenger front fender, even though it was on the hood, bumper, and driver uh, fender, which was super weird. I think it had to do with how they blended the paint for the uh, passenger rear paint job. And yeah, it, it just wasn't in great shape. Had a tilt screen, had a matte screen protector, so probably was enthusiast-ish owned, but it's hard to say for sure. But also it seems like the car's had a pretty rough life, unfortunately. At the right price, I would definitely buy it. Like, doesn't it's not enough to scare me away, but it is enough that I it has to be priced right for it to be worthwhile of buying. Uh, and I think 25 is the right price for that. And then it's also eligible for the used EV tax credit of $4,000. And fun tidbit, I was reading through some of the IRS guidelines. So it looks like you can actually use your previous year's uh, tax or adjusted gross income for qualification for the used EV tax credit, which I think probably opens it up to a lot more people that may have had lower income and then had their income go up to allow them to afford an EV. So that was good. And also if you're self-employed, it's pretty easy to get your adjusted gross income under 75K, unless you're making just a crap load of money. Um, but anyway, long story short, didn't end up with the Tesla Model 3, but open to buying that particular one if they can get the price down, which sounds like maybe they will, maybe they won't. The sales guy that I was talking to sounded like he was interested in that particular one as well if I didn't buy it but I kind of showed him some other ones on Auto Trader that were in a bit better shape and listed lower. They didn't have full self-driving, but I don't think he cared or really even knew what the difference was. Definitely didn't tell them that it had full self-driving, but realistically, I wasn't willing to pay extra for it anyway. It was just kind of a bonus for the vehicle. Uh, but we're headed to Hillsboro to the Sheets. There's an Electrify America there. Uh, mostly because I want to grab some food there and I figure that's a decent stop. We could make it farther. We're at 66% right now. So decent amount of charge and we're only going 31 miles there. But like I said, Sheets has pretty good food. It's a decent stopping point just to kind of catch up on things. Uh, get out of general Raleigh, Durham area of sorts. 
and we'll see you in Hillsboro. Here's the route just so you can see it. So we were over there, we're headed up that way. Hopefully uh, not too much traffic as we're going along here. It was a Saturday, so shouldn't have rush hour or anything like that. Not sure if you guys can hear that buzzing, but that's the Rivian preconditioning. It's quite loud. We'll see uh, how charging goes with the preconditioning. So loud. Let's see how far it is to home from here. Oh, there's the preconditioning stopping. We're just about to pull in here to uh, Sheets. I don't even know if anyone else is charging. Looks like we've got a bolt towing a trailer already then. Oh, we've got a full house. Wow. I might actually just continue on. Oh, and we've got an I-4 ahead of us. We have a full-on queue. Look at this. Wow. It's quite something. Well, I might just grab a snack and continue on because I have plenty of range. So, uh, yeah. Well, we're at the Hillsboro Electrify America. I'm trying to charge. They're trying to charge in that I-4 and we've got a full house here. So, I think I'm just gonna run into sheets, grab some snacks instead of uh, continuing on. The site definitely needs a lot more capacity. Well, we're back on the road. Decided not to charge, but ran, ran in, use the restroom. We're gonna stop in Greensboro instead. Uh, that's an eight stall, maybe 10 stall, something like that, uh, Electrify America. And we'll hit the road. We'll also arrive with lower state of charge there, which will be better anyway. Um, but definitely didn't feel like waiting for two bolts and a leaf and uh, e-tron to charge, Just, no thanks. That sounds terrible to me. Uh, one of the bolts did leave like while I was standing there chatting with the other bolt, but there was an I-4 that rolled in just before me and then another I-4 actually rolled by as I was chatting with the other bolt owner. Uh, and the bolt owner that was towing said he got 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour with his little utility trailer. Uh, and actually it's a bolt EUV, but 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour with the trailer is kind of comical considering I get uh, about 1.92 ish just driving along. So it's all a matter of perspective because 2.7 in a Bolt is terrible. 2.7 in a Rivian would be considered excellent, but let's get on the road. Well, we're in Greensboro, North Carolina. We've got a new Nero here, which looks pretty good. Look at the new front end. Charge port in the middle just looks kind of silly, I think, but actually probably not a bad spot for it. Um, headlights look better in person than I expected them to. We're charging up. There's an I-4 here. Chatted with the guy for a bit. Likes the car. Let's see uh, how the charging's going. So we're at 55%. We started around 30 something, I believe. So charging really well here. And let's see how far it is to get home. So we already have enough to get home, but I'm gonna run into Walmart. Probably go buy a hitch actually. Well, just unplugged here, we're at, I think, 82%. Yes, 82%. Bought a hitch, got a Twix, got a kombucha. We're headed 94 miles home. We'll arrive with a decent bit of buffer. Um, and I'll see you there. Well, we've made it back to my apartment here in South Park, Charlotte. Uh, overall, pretty good day on the road. Got to check out a Model 3. It's actually been a while since I've driven a Model 3, so that was kind of good. Um, forgot that long range rear wheel drives are kind of slow. Uh, I guess they're like five seconds, zero to 60, something like that. Um, but coming out of my Rivian, everything, I guess, kind of feels slow at this point. Didn't buy a car today, which is probably for the best, um, even though I was kind of ready to buy one if I wanted to. We'll see what happens with that 
vehicle if they call me saying hey we'll take 25 i guess i need to do a little bit more research on the used ev tax credit just to make sure i fully understand it and any requirements around it but i'm curious what do you guys think would you have bought it i think it was kind of rough at the price but market shifting down too so i don't know but let me show you the stats here quick before we wrap this video up so we drove 350 miles, not bad, 1.83 miles per kilowatt hour, and Rivian still has not fixed the bug there of total energy. And we're just 250 miles short of hitting 15,000 miles on the odometer of the truck. Um, we'll see if that ends up going up to two miles per kilowatt hour or not. I don't know, but wow, almost 400 hours in the vehicle driving and 38 mile per hour average speed is pretty high, I'd say. Today we did about six hours, so not bad. But anyway, if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.